Hi everyone, this is Kathy Grosskirk with Bookkeeping Clean and Simple and I am doing a special video today and it's going to be an addendum to the QuickBooks Online Accountant QBOA series that I did a few weeks ago on the Path to Pro Advisor and this is in particular to adding team members. I have some special tips for you and I realized that it was brought to my attention that there was a gap in this type of instruction so I wanted to try to fill this gap and let you know of a couple of considerations that you need to consider as you are adding team members to your firm. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I am in the team tab of our accounting realm. And so we will first start by clicking on add user here because we talked about doing that. And this is where you would actually add a user, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm not actually going to go through the process of adding this user, but I'm going to go ahead and add me or pretend like I'm adding me. So here we go, Kathy Rose Curd. And then this is the first consideration and, and where it says title right here, you can come up with any title that you want. I talked about that in the last video that we did, but the first consideration is that you want to make sure when you're doing this, is that you actually, and I suggest using the team member's personal email address so that they can sign up for their own QBOA account and work on their pro advisor certification if that's important to you for your firm. So in other words, a lot of team members get assigned a company email, which is perfectly fine. You can use that for internal communications or whatnot. But when you're adding team members to your QuickBooks Online firm, you want to add them with their personal email address uh, ideally, the one that is attached to an Intuit ID and to their personal ProAdvisor account. Because what's going to happen is when they do that, they can certify on their own and you'll be able to see the certifications like we talked about. And I'll go back to that page in a little bit so I, we can review that. But you want to make sure that you sign them up with their personal email address. The other thing that you want to do is that you want to make sure that you copy and paste the email address for the person whom you wish to add to the team. And that's real important because I had an instance and I talked about this in the last training that we did. And we talked about the fact that it's real important to make sure that the email address is correct because if you don't make sure that the email address is correct, then what's gonna happen is that they're never gonna get the invite. And even if you try to correct it within this space here, you're not gonna be able to. So it's best to just copy and paste the email address, preferably from an email that you received from them to make sure that it's correct. And then for the title, we can just put whatever title and that, that's arbitrarily determined by you. So I'll just put in term, not that it really matters. So when we go to the next screen, this is another important consideration. So what happens here is that you only have for firm access, these options, you have view only and edit. And unfortunately, there's no way to hide that from your team members at this point. That's where I recommend that you use the Intuit feedback button, which you have in your big gear setting where you can provide Intuit with feedback. If enough of us let them know that we would like an option for that information to be hidden, the only ones that should be seeing that information are those that you bring into your firm. It's going to be working on your books. Okay, so that you want to make sure but right now, these are the only two options. So basically, if you're going to be adding team members and you don't want them messing with your books, you're only going to be able to add them with view only, firm users none, and subscription and billing none. So that, that's the only thing you're going to be able to do at this point. Now, and, and also your firm's books and vendors and creditors, you want that no. Now you do, if you want them to manage any of your clients, you're going to have to switch this over to yes. So we will do that. And then this right here, again, like we talked about before, this allows you to see what types of access that you can grant your team member. And it's not real granular as we have seen. Again, use that feedback button and give into it that feedback to let them know that you would at least like to see the option to have your firm information hidden for those that you don't want messing with your books or even, or even having any business being part of your books. So when we go to the next screen here, this is where you can specify client access. If you want them to work on all the files, you can check every single one of these. That's by default, so you have to remember to uncheck these and then just check the ones that you want them to have access to, like we're doing here, okay? 
And basically, just remember that granting user access to a client gives them full admin permissions to that client's QuickBooks Online file. So once you do that, you're going to click Save, which we're not going to do here. But that's the process that you would take to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and exit without saving. And this is real important. When we go over here to the certifications, and this is what I'm talking about. If you have individuals sign up with their personal email account, you'll be able to view their certifications and see their expiration dates here. And if that's important to you, you wanna make sure that you enable them to grant access to your firm's realm with their personal email address. Because not only do they get points for any certifications they get, but as a firm, you get points for the certification. So if we go over here to the benefits area, you'll see all these points that they get are based on the points not only that you get as a firm member, but also for your team as well. So this is the history and it shows all those points and how they're computed. But anyway, that's basically all I have for today. And I hope this helps you. And I'm gonna go back to the team tab where we started. Y'all take care, have a wonderful day, and we will see you very, very soon. Thank you for watching. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and share it with others. My goal is to publish at least one new video per week on QuickBooks desktop or online topics, the occasional motivational video, and a few surprises thrown in here and there. I would love to talk to you about how to help you optimize your knowledge and usage of QuickBooks desktop or online. My Calendly link is in the slide. Please use that to reach out to me to schedule a free 45-minute initial consult. I would love to talk to you about your QuickBooks desktop or online training needs. Again, have a wonderful day, and until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care.